I ate them. That's right. I ate the divorce papers. I ate them with ketchup and they were good. Good. You probably want me to get serious about our divorce. The thing is, you always called our marriage a joke. So let's use logic here. If A, we never had a serious marriage, then B, we can have a serious divorce. No, we can't. The whole thing's a farce, Charles. A farce that tastes good with ketchup. I mean, wasn't it last week your dad asked you the reason you walked down the aisle with me? And you said, for the exercise. Ha ha. That's funny. You're a funny guy, Charles. I'm laughing, not crying. Ha ha. I'm laughing because you're about to give up on a woman who is infinitely lovable. For instance, Paul. Paul has loved me since the eighth grade. He's made 127 passes at me, proposed 47 times, and sent me over 200 original love sonnets. He sees something in me, Charles. And he writes it down in metered verse. That's not something that you just find every day. Someone who really loves you, loves everything about who you are as a person, Paul may be insane, but I value his feelings for me. I would never ask him to sign his name to a piece of paper promising to just turn off his feelings for me. Forever. And that's what you're doing to me. For you. Sign away my right to. To that sweet voice, Charles. To those baby brown eyes. To the way your hands feel through my hair before bed. Those aren't things that I want to lose. In fact, I won't lose them. I won't lose you. All of you. I've written you a sonnet. <laughs> Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May and... I'm not crying. I'm laughing. It's all a big joke. It's very funny, Charles. I just keep waiting for you to say April Fools and then I'd rush into your arms and... But you're not going to, are you? No. Of course not. It's not April. I... I didn't write that sonnet. Paul did. I think it's good. You see, the truth, the truth is I ate the divorce papers, Charles, because I can't stomach losing you.
I am Maddie Pearson, and this monologue is Plan B by D.M. Larson. You could drop one of those theater lights up there. On her. <laughs> those guards would sure scramble then. <laughs> we'll call that Plan B. <laughs> you sure can't drop one on her just for fun? Well, of course I don't want to become a red shirt. Red is not my color. Oh. oh, what's the point of escaping? I mean, my time is almost up, and if I ran, Gussie and I couldn't even. Oh, Gussie made me promise not to tell anyone about his proposal. I just realized that I can't even shop for my own ring. Pearl violation. And I hate shopping online. Online. Catalogs. Th th that's like pure torture. I have to touch diamonds. See them sparkle? I saw this wedding dress once that sparkled like diamonds. Oh, it was an outdoor wedding. And the sun lit her up. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I need that dress. They can play my favorite song at the wedding. So I'm walking like a giant diamond to Gus. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Please don't tell him I told you. Ugh. Hi, my name is Angela Farrow. I'm managed by Alexi Angelino of AKA Talent Management, and I'm doing a monologue for the Monologue Monday Challenge. The monologue that I've chosen is Talking in Circles by Shayna Harris. You didn't believe in me. I laugh at the fact that you didn't believe in me and it drove me to not believe in myself. How could I have been so dumb? You don't even believe in yourself. So where could your faith in me come from? The nerve of you to set such high standards for me when you don't even live up to your potential. I remember looking into your eyes and seeing past the smoke screen of drug abuse, dust from the streets. Tired and overused, you came to me and I received you with grace. Who am I to judge? I ain't shit either. There's something about a tired soul that drains yours. Soul sucking in disguise of soul searching. I gave you all I had while you rested. I put my life on the line for you. I was your blessing. Another me you haven't found, huh? No woman can live with that amount of disrespect, and that proves I was insane. Insanely in love with the idea of being in love, forcing myself to stay in it for the win, as if love was some sort of a challenge. No way it should have been that difficult, but I made it work. Two jobs, paying all the bills while you drove my car and entertained your numerous associates and friends in the house that I struggled to keep together. But it was broken. Like the lamp <laughs> I threw at you. Like the dishes that crashed against the wall. Broken like the door frame you kicked in. Broken.
broken. Like our love. If there ever was any. You sit there and you stare as if nothing I am saying is resonating in your spirit, let alone in your fucking head! Hello! <laughs> Are you listening? Do you hear the ache in my heart the way I feel it? <laughs> Can you fathom the pain I'm in? Do you care? <laughs> Do you care? You never did. I am talking in circles, and I am wasting my breath on a man who has no respect. 